Welcome to the Liars Club. This is where we take our guests, we tell them to give us the truth, give us a lie, we figure out which is which. I'm Jessica Wellington. I'm Felicia Michaels. And you're about to get lied to. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Liars Club. I'm Felicia Michaels. And I'm Jessica Wellington. And oh my God, Jessica, in the room here at the uh, comedy store down in the podcasting area, we have a whole bunch of handsome going on, don't we? We do. Uh, we have some uh, amazing guests. I have uh, invited today a gentleman who I think is one of the sharpest comedians I've seen in a long time, both uh, uh, with uh, family humor, humor about himself, but also political humor. Please give it up for Mr. Tamar Katan. Hey. Yay. Oh, thanks, man. That's a nice compliment. I appreciate it. I love how you say how sharp he was and, and his eyes are barely open. <laughs> <laughs> That's because he's always smiling. He's always smiling. I'm smiling and also I love the weed, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. There we go. How about you, Jessica? Who did you bring today? I brought a, such a... I love this guy. He is hilarious. He's a paid regular at the Comedy Store. He's also doing this fun dance show coming up that I'm really excited about. I, as soon as I saw it in the belly room, I said, that's that's going to be on TV because it's oh, amazing. Really? Awesome. And oh, nice. He, he's done the roast battles, judging that. And he's just he's amazing. It's Justin Martindale. Yay. 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 Welcome, Justin Martindale. <laughs> Have you actually uh, uh, like been the judge on Roast Battle and participated in Roast Battle at the oh, same no, time? Oh, no. I don't battle i judge oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I, I did the battle once and, and against bob golub and i don't know if you guys know who bob golub no. is but he's like he's an older fella and uh, and he's a you know ex-boxer and all that and i fucking lost a bob golub and then i went to all the judges afterwards i'm like do you guys ever do that and they're like fuck no we never do the roast battle i'm like i'm the idiot <laughs> yeah. so, you is for lost you. to a guy named golub I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I thought my jokes were good. I wrote jokes about Bob's an ex boxer. His head has been hit on more than Khloe Kardashian's clit, you know, by a black guy. You know what I mean? Like, nothing. I got nothing. Anyway, there we go. I uh, We usually start off with a theme, but we've been trying to be more conversational. And uh, and I had never really known that much about Justin. And I went and looked on your site and uh, on your agent site. And uh, I didn't know you were the last comedian picked by Mitzi Shore to be a regular here at the Comedy Store. I mean, I thought that's what an amazing thing to have <laughs> on your resume. And I'm totally fucking serious, no, by the uh, way. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. absolutely right. Because <laughs> you're looking at me like, shut up. No, I'm just I'm like, like, it just no. gets like nostalgic. Yeah, yeah like, it oh, does, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. That's super sweet. Yeah, it's really cool. So you, you knew her. No. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> you, no. Never talk, you never talked to her at all? I talked to her, let's see, I think it was the 40th anniversary of this place, like, oh, wow. a couple years ago. And it was, like, the last time I think she was brought around, and I just remember going up to her and, like, like holding her hand, and, like, I grabbed her hand, and I looked at her, and she just kind of didn't really, you know, she was kind of out of it, and, um... I was just like, thank you so much for everything. And, and she just kind of like squeezed my hand. And that's all I've needed. Aww. Yeah. Aww. Nice. But yeah, no, like she, when I got past, I, she like got out of there. Like she, she saw what she needed to see and was like, okay, bye. And left. Aww. And that, and that, and then that was, and there was I was such an idiot back then. <laughs> How old were you back then? I was old enough. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> all right, all right, I get it. I could, I could get into the club. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was uh, it was like right after Michael Jackson died. So it was like the day after Oh, that. wow. And then it was just like, well, you know, like one of those nights where everybody's here. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like everyone's like just cool and hanging out. And, and uh, <laughs> I remember going over to Tommy, who was the uh, – uh, the booker, the he booker. Yeah, he who for... shall not be named. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Voldemort. Um, but he was always nice to me, and uh, he was just like, "You have just been passed as a paid regular," and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> like I had, no, I had no idea. Like, oh really? I had like no idea what it was. Or... <laughs> right. I was like, uh, okay. okay thanks. Yeah. And... How long were you? Had you been doing comedy? Uh, let's see. Uh, October two thousand eight to June two thousand nine. There you so go. Very, wow. very quick. Wow. And I was just doing like like monthly shows around town. I never did like an open mic or anything like that. Right. Wow, so you really had no clue. Yeah. At all. Now yeah. looking and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> but now looking back, it must feel like wow, it's it's probably better you had no clue. Right? It was I mean, it was definitely boot camp, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Being uh, passed that quick, you'd have you're just and everyone yeah. hates you. <laughs> and everyone's like, Who the hell are you? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't yeah. know my voice. Yeah. And then, you know, you get like those 115 spots for a couple years. And yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. It really it 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 does help you grow. So oh much. yeah 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 yeah. You have to. Yeah. I remember I remember even when they were like uh, so yeah you're gonna call in your avails and like every Monday and everything and I was just like oh god I have to do this like all the time now. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. god! I was like, oh man. That's why everybody hated you. Yeah, was, yeah. Because I was like, oh, this, oh, it's a job. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm so glad I didn't know you then. Yeah, I, I, was, just, I was just a little prick. I would just run after you with a megaphone, just yelling bad words at yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> there was a time when that did happen, and then you realize, oh wait, I, I appreciate this and the opportunity that was given to me. It's cool. Yeah. So. Well, um, you know, I uh, uh, we were going to have Jenny Yang on today, and she couldn't come today. And I, what I really wanted to talk about, and I, I think Justin will absolutely be able to jump in on this, too, is uh, we normally don't do topical stuff, but John McCain died. And I kind of got pissed at some of my comedy friends mm-hmm. on social media for the first time Uh-oh. a little bit because everyone was going back and forth, especially on Facebook, uh, about – uh, how McCain was a bad guy, and uh, yeah, I get it. Uh, <laughs> but saying that if any liberals had an ounce of empathy for uh, what he's been through or his death, then that means you're a fake ally. And what? I was like, oh, what shut the up. That's so stupid. That? Ugh, I'm so over garbage. Yeah, I'm yeah. just so over everyone yeah. being so divided mm-hmm. all the time. And like, Wasn't I know- he like a POW or something? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah. Like a mate, like. For a very yeah, long Republicans time, Republicans usually like, like respect three years that. Or so. well, yeah, and that's the they, thing, yeah. Not yeah. only that, he was he was supposed to be released from a prison camp, and he said, "No, I don't want to be released. I want others." He wants to stay with his friends. Yeah, he wants to stay with his friends because com- exactly. Yeah. Well, I think like, it was didn't it have something to do with the the order of captured is the order of release of of a POW or something like that, and something he was like, going to be yeah. able to go early because his because father his dad, was exactly. a, uh, an admiral in the navy or something. Yeah. Uh, and, and then he picks Sarah Palin as a running mate. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. Oh, that's God. where that's where it's oh. like, why did you do that? But that's oh. how panicky the Republican Party was. I don't want to yeah. make this political, but what I was trying to get to, in a sense, is how do you guys talk about what you're feeling on stage when it comes to what's happening around you without mm. letting anger get in on oh, it? Oh, it's so because funny. Because when I you think said about that. your political comedy, yeah. it's so fucking smooth. Yeah, and he's there's good. No, oh, thanks, there's you guys. No yeah. anger attached to it, but it hits the, the target perfectly. Oh, thank you. That mean, it's so, I had a conversation. It's so weird that you bring this up because it's literally a conversation I had with one of my friends at JF, when we were at JFL. Uh-huh. And it was, the, I have. I don't only get angry. I have anger management issues. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was a headbutter when I was a kid. Jesus. Like I headbutted oh, really? people. <laughs> Look, my dad taught me how to take a punch. He didn't teach me how to throw one. And so, like when you're, so you were the butt ran. I was the person the, who would headbutt people. <laughs> and the headbutter. I would headbutt people <laughs> because here's what. <laughs> oh, oh the, I was a rammer. I was a butter. I was, yeah, I was the butt and the ram. Yeah, exactly. Sounds like me in college. <laughs> It was Ooh, crazy. The temperature so I, just went up in here. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, uh, so with me, like I have real anger issues. Uh-huh. And so I've noticed if I write angry, there's too many holes in my, in my bit. And it, all of a sudden I become much more prone to heckling. Mm-hmm. But if I, if I write calm, I can still perform it with some anger. And it's more bulletproof. Uh-huh. So anger actually doesn't help me write. It helps me perform, that makes but it doesn't help me sense. write. Yeah. 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 No. Do you feel like you, t- when you guys are doing comedy, that you have to get past being uh, initially angry in order to perform it? Like I used to have this bit about when I got divorced, and I was so fucking angry at this and because it was a pretty terrible story that happened in my divorce. But once I moved past the pain of that, then the bit suddenly started to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and it, but I mean, it says a lot about me that I committed to that bit for six fucking <laughs> months before it worked. <laughs> that's how angry I was. That's but once good. I got past it, it's, it totally started to work. Absolutely. Right? It's hard to be angry in the moment, don't you think? Yeah, 100%. Well, out. and I feel, I feel like everybody's waiting to get triggered. Like yeah. everyone's just on bated breath, just like, offend me so I can say something and you know i'll look like an asshole but at least i got the chance to say speak up or whatever yeah and so i kind of when i do it when i'm on stage i um i kind of poke fun at the ridiculousness of everything else not political uh-huh like just how stupid everything else is because i just feel like it's so saturated right now and just i mean you can't not escape it like 
Twitter to to the news to ever it's everywhere it's everywhere it's, and it's just too much and I just feel like it's I feel like people now are just I feel like at the beginning of the election and or afterwards at the beginning I felt like it was very topical and yeah sure like with you I feel like what you say is like is it brings like a a a, a sense of smarts to it whereas like if I don't really know everything I mean I'm aware but I can't really voice an opinion really on stuff like uh-huh. that because it'll just I just sound like an idiot or I don't know how to like word it properly much like this podcast because <laughs> I'm like how does English work um but but like yeah and I've seen you know I've seen comics go on the road and they they record their sets or whatever and you know they get heckled and stuff like that but then yeah, they use can... it as like look I got heckled and you're just kind of like okay like right <laughs> right yeah that's not it should not be the goal you know yeah. well sometimes when you're bombing you're praying that someone heckles you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah like please <laughs> yeah help me from myself I just don't I don't go political yeah I really yeah, I don't you're not political at all no because I like you say I don't have the smarts for it I can't even say words yeah. I, I, how am I gonna? Good talk, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm, th- I've been trying to. I really don't know how to. Can't say the word mediocre. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mediocre. <laughs> That was an effort, yeah. <laughs> oh, I hate fried mediocre. Ooh. Ooh. I love mediocre. And I don't want to be... That joke's for Andrew. He's from Oklahoma. Know, I'm not <laughs> great at either one. I don't know that... I've given up on politics. I remember mm. I went in the Air Force, and then I just I remember calling my dad, and I'm like, so since I'm in the Air Force, do I have to vote Republican? You know? Really? Yeah. I didn't wow. know. I thought, oh, I'm in the Air Force. I'm in the military, so I must be Republican now. Oh. Wow, really? I did, yeah. Wow. I mean, I, now I see more and I have issues that, I, that I'm that i for and against. I'm more that lean that way than being uh-huh. completely political either way. Well, I wasn't that political in my 20s, but in my 30s, I started to be more about it. I get really angry when it comes to issues of like taking food stamps away and stuff like that because I grew up on welfare. Mm-hmm. And I ate a lot of government cheese. Right. I, you know, I didn't starve when I was 14, but I think I only two two shits that summer. <laughs> <You know what laughs> I mean? That's how much cheese I <laughs> ate as a kid. I, the only thing that's really like making me upset about this whole John McCain thing is that, you know, he is like the ultimate veteran, I think. like 100%. Right. And like yeah. you have all these, you know, Trumpers or whatever who are just like, well, no. And I'm like. What? Like, what why can't we unite on one thing? Wrong? Like, yeah. I, granted, God. yeah, he made some mistakes, and he even said he made mistakes. You know, his his state that he represented was the last state that recognized Martin Luther King Day as a yeah. holiday. So yeah. it's like, yeah, we know he kind of like messed up, but then like as he got older, I mean, I feel like, you know, with the whole healthcare thing, and he was just like, no, this is absolutely horrible, and thumbs it down. I feel that, like the Liberal Party and like the, the Democrats the, the, were trying to say, hey, come on, everybody, let's just hug. And then the Republicans are like, we ain't gay, we don't hug. <laughs> we don't eat your gay cakes. <laughs> God. Yeah, you should not be re- voting at all, Jessica, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> we ain't gay and we don't hug. Finally, somebody yeah. has summarized Finally. it in the most perfect <laughs> way. I didn't want to have to say it, but I said yeah, it. You didn't put that on a shirt I mean, selling the red right. shirts. <laughs> I've been waiting. <laughs> Selling at a Walmart in <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> we ain't gay and we don't hug. No <laughs> Republican. That is hilarious, Jessica. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, here at the Liars Club, we ask our guests uh, to tell two stories. I don't know how to follow up. We ain't gay and we don't hug, so we just got to get right to the fucking game. So we ask our uh, guests to tell two stories, one the truth and one a lie, and we rotate it around. Who would like to start? I don't know. I think that means you. I think you start. I just tell one of them? Uh, You'll just tell one of them. It can be the lie. Don't tell us what it is, the lie or the truth, and then we'll pepper you with some questions. It might feel a little interrogating, especially with mediocre over here. Yeah, mediocre. (laughs) (laughs) Mediocre. Hashtag mediocre. Okay, well. That's what we're going to put on it, yeah. <laughs> Already planning it out, you guys. <laughs> um, so I was about 12 years old, and I grew up in Texas. And in Texas, they have, like, carnivals, but they were also, like, in parking lots. 
Yeah. Yes. Except if you've ever been to a carnival, yes. like a, like in a, in a. Is it like the pickle festival or like the strawberry festival? Um, no, it's, it's <laughs> the pickle. <laughs> I'm all about the pickle festival, though. Uh, Jessica, it's like the, the delicious. Sounds like the pregnant That's lady affair. Who hasn't been to the pickle <laughs> Which festival? One is Pickles it? and strawberries. <laughs> I can't wait. Is it the Oprah <laughs> festival? <laughs> um, That's what we have in my town. <laughs> so they had, so they had this, uh, they had this ride called the Zipper, and I think it's still around. So it's pretty much a cage, an iron cage, uh-huh. and you get in, and it flips around and around right, and okay. around and around, yes. and you like lose all your change in your pockets and stuff like that. And so I was actually with a friend of mine. Uh, it was my friend at the time and his dad, um, and we went there. It was like in the afternoon, and um, uh, how old were you? Twelve, like twelve, like eleven, twelve years old. Okay, yeah, middle school, <laughs> and. Um, I remember we we were like, oh, let's go ride the let's go ride the zipper. That's gonna be our last ride we're gonna get on. And and the dad like got a call and he's like, no, we have to get going. Something happened or whatever. And um, so I was like, man, I really want to get on the zipper. And as we're walking out of the park, one of the fucking things flew off the rail with people in them. And everyone, oh my god! And everyone, no. and everyone oh my! Started like running to it. And the <laughs> my friend's dad at the time was like, all right, kids, let's get in the car. We're gonna go. And I was like, holy shit! We were like just about like we saw it get oh loaded god. in. And everything it was just like one of those like rickety like like parking lot carnivals. That I Did was you like, hear it land? Oh like, yeah, oh, like yeah? It, like you hear you heard like the gears shift, and then uh-huh. all of a sudden you just hear bam, and then everything. Did it was like, roll? Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, like what? Like roll like this? Yeah, I can see it rolling. It started, and then like as it progressed, it just went. Oh, and it did, did it roll on the ground when it, it hit? It rolled on the ground. I didn't see if anybody like got hit or anything, but like I'm assuming. Oh my! Did God, you have any happened. impulse to run towards it? No, I was 11. I was like, "Fuck this nonsense!" Really? Yes. No. Really? I was like, Mm-mm, "Can't get involved." By yeah. Wow. So you didn't think intense. like some of my friends from school might be on there? No. Do you still hear the screams? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it was, it was definitely like a shock because you're just yeah. Like, it's like you know, and then you, then I was like. I remember when the Final Destination moments came out, or the Final Destination movies came out. Uh-huh. I was like, "Oh shit, this is like totally one of those things." Yeah. And did it? Uh, oh, did someone die because of this accident? I don't remember. I feel uh-huh. like people were injured because I remember it being on the news that night. Wow. Yeah. Did you hear screaming? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. wow. When I lived in Vegas, all the time the rides are off the stratosphere. You know the tall. Oh thing. yeah. Oh, they always get stuck, and people are like it. it oh. Usually, it'd be no problem if it's just at a fair, but yeah. this is dangling. Up it's in the so air scary. of the stratosphere, and you're dangling above the city, yeah. and it's frozen. And it's the worst. Can't. Yeah. It's wow. the worst. It's, it's like my those, biggest nightmare. It's so scary. Yeah. You know, when you see something so unexpected and violent happen like that, I had an experience once where I was, uh, and it was like Sunday night, coming over Squirrel Ball Center on the freeway 405, and the light was really beautiful because the sun was coming down, and it for some reason, there wasn't that many cars on the freeway. There were some, but this motorcycle uh, flew past me, Uh-oh. and then he got about 50 feet in front of me, and something just happened, whether it was a pebble or something, but the motorcycle laid down. Oh, shit. And when it laid down, it started it s- started spinning. So he, So it laid down, and then it started spinning. And there was a truck, like a delivery truck, a white panel oh, delivery no. truck. And from playing pool, and I'm not trying to be funny about it, you could see that the guy was going to go under one of the tires, that that was oh. the trajectory as it was spinning. And sure enough, and it happened so lickety split, and when the guy went under there, it, he, his head got run over. You guys, oh you God. saw somebody's head get run over. It was Felicia. so horrific. It gave me an instant migraine. Oh my and God! Then, uh, like instant migraine. I picked up my cell phone and I called nine one one. But I kept going because I would have caused an accident. It yeah, was one of, of those course. things where that and uh, then they. I think he didn't survive because well, they I, called me a couple ugh, of weeks later. Yeah, the, wow. but it's so terrifying yeah. to see that as a kid would be terrifying. Well, it's a, it's Shit, a, it's a shock yeah. too. Because yeah, but you saw somebody's head get yeah. right yeah. over. Yes, I know, and I saw the blood mark at, for like a couple of weeks. Because it didn't rain for a long and the, time. And the word you used to set up the head crush was lickety the split. Blood mark. <laughs> <laughs> and lickety split, and lickety his split. cranium that exploded that across oh. the. It's yeah. the goriest thing I've ever but heard after the cutest phrase. You guys, phrase. it's given me PTSD. <laughs> yeah. did, did you have know, PTSD like against like, carnival rides when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I have but a, I, I bet it didn't hit you right away. Because as a oh, kid, no, no, you no, just no. see this cage and you're like, oh, that could have been us. But you don't think about, oh, there were other people on there. 
Yeah, and I remember like my parents being like, "Do you need to like talk to anybody or anything?" And I was just like, "No, I'm fine." Like I knew no, no it was none of my friends because uh-huh. like nobody was talking about it, and it was also like it wasn't like a busy. It was busy, but it was like a weekday. I feel like it was like after school we went. It was like near the end of when this carnival what closed town down. of texas was this in this was in san antonio outside of san so it's antonio. a little bit bigger so maybe your parking lot fairs are a lot bigger because yeah. okay usually the little pop-ups don't have the zipper that's a big ride to have. yeah 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 that makes sense. <laughs> i right. love that you just shared this violent crazy <laughs> thing that I know. happened and jessica's still <laughs> fucking all over it, it was the first this thing, is game, the first thing that popped here are my, my questions <laughs> it just popped in my head no pun intended no oh. wow Wow. It's like an episode of Murder, She Wrote. Just so investigative. So do you <laughs> ever go on uh, any kind of rides at a fair? Or anything I do, like, I'll go to, like, Six Flags or, like, uh-huh. actual amusement parks, but right. I, I don't. Like, I remember I every time I see them, because they still have them around every now and then, like, yeah. you're driving down the highway or whatever, and you just look over, and you're like, <gasps> oh, God. It's yeah. T- yeah, it's gross. Yeah, that's PTSD, dude. Yeah, I have PTSD from when I saw that guy's head got run over. Yeah, to the point where I there's only a few people I will drive in a car with because I don't want any hijinks or shenanigans. And most comedians are stoned, so I don't fucking play that way. Like if you're gonna drive the car, and I was with hanging out with my friend Johnny the other day, and I was like, "Bitch, pull this car over right now." We were on the freeway. He was literally in the car for three minutes. I was like, "Nope," and I felt bad. But you gotta do what you gotta do. That's your life. Yeah. 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 Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> your turn, Tamara. That's your life. That's your life. <laughs> and go. So hardcore. So mine actually has to do with a girl named Felicia. Oh wow. She really? was um wow. she was the prettiest girl in my school. Her of name was course, Felicia. Of course. And uh, it was in an area called La Puente. Uh, my dad was doing well in life, so we got to move out of East LA and go to La Puente, which Very was just nice. as violent, but oh, with really? but with a better house. Okay but just as violent. And um, there's a girl named Felicia that I, f- I fell in love with at school, and one day she showed up on my street on a weekend, and I was uh-huh. like, oh my God, what's Felicia doing here? What color was Felicia? She was like Latina, okay. but she had white Damn, girl hair. Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. She was like- You didn't what? ask yeah. Justin what was the color of everybody in the fucking zipper. <laughs> it was in Texas, we know. <laughs> That's not true. That's I don't, not true. But she was a, blo- a blonde-haired Latina. It makes a difference. I there don't see color, so- <laughs> A blonde-haired Latina is like extra was, points. And you went uh, like whenever you went up at the show in Ice House, the Ice House, uh-huh. uh, Punky was like, "I was like, you're next. Felicia's up. She's like, Felicia's not fucking up. She thought assumed Felicia was a black girl. Oh, that's oh, funny. Re- oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Oh, well, there you uh-huh. go. Huh. Well, I assume Punky is a white woman, so yeah, because of Punky a Brewster. Point. Yeah. Right. See? Yeah. So and tell never, her and that next time. Never, like, and there's never a woman named Punky. Ever. I always assumed it was a a, a parakeet. Yeah. <laughs> Punky's not a Punky will kill everyone. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna Punk- say shit to Punky. Punk- <laughs> no. Punky's the name of a parakeet on on a bottle of rum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had look at me and I've been like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she will kill you. Yeah. yeah. With one look. Yeah. She's very funny, by the way. She's great. So her name is Felicia. So her she name's is a blonde Felicia. Latina. Blonde Latina shows up on my street on a weekend and I become overwhelmed. And I'm like, I have to get her attention. What do I do? And I wasn't versed in the ways of romance yet. Uh-huh. So I started to do a Papa Wheelie on my bike. That's so fucking romantic. Yeah, as a way to get her attention. I'm like, this is it. And I do a pop wheelie and I'm like, Felicia, Felicia. (laughs) (laughs) While I'm doing the pop wheelie, I'm just yelling her name, going, Felicia. (laughs) And and right then the sidewalk dips Uh to where the driveway is and I'm like, oh, and I like roll (laughs) into a parked car and I smash my wiener and my balls. Ew. I fall on the ground. I was wearing white shorts. Oh. And and I I'm like I'm like oh and I'm screaming and I look down and there was blood <laughs> oh, starting to no. leak from my no. genital area. So these kids are like, go get his dad, not knowing <laughs> that my dad was an immigrant with a drinking problem. <laughs> so then my dad comes out and there's the girl I love and I'm laying on the ground holding my my shorts and my dad pulls off my shorts. Oh my god! In, oh, front, of, no! in front of everybody <laughs> with your broken dick. Holds my dick in his hand oh, and he goes. No! And he has a cigarette in the side of his mouth. He's like, you're going to need stitches. You're going to need stitches. <laughs> and he just keeps rubbing my dick with his finger. Four, <laughs> years, four years. Four years go by, and I think, now we're, now we're in high how school. Old were, oh, how old were you when This was happened? like fifth grade. So, but this is so now it's like okay. freshman prom, sophomore prom, like that. The numbers and I work go, out, Jessica. Move yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. So I go up to Felicia, and I'm like, hey, we're in this class. She's sitting in front of me. I'm sitting behind her. 
and I whisper to her, I'm like, hey, Felicia, do you want to go to prom with me? And she turns around, and she just starts laughing. And I'm like, what? She goes, you're funny. And I'm like, thank you. And she goes, no, no, you're funny because you're asking me to prom, and I saw your dad touch your dick. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh she still remembered it. She wow, totally yeah, she like right. knew the details. <laughs> That's, that's one She story. said it that way. She said it that way. So you and have, it was you have PTSD. I yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're fucking a girl named Felicia. <laughs> you know what I realized too? It's I've never had someone say I've never been rejected in a whisper uh -huh. before. I've always been rejected at regular volume. A whisper is worse. Oh yeah. For someone to say no and whisper it and is laugh so, and laugh. Yeah. Oh. No, that's the worst too. Wow. You're funny. Because yeah. that's kind of what's it patronizing. It is, yeah. 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 That you, so pandering. Your, yeah. Your dad yeah. just what was up with? Did you ever confront your dad? And like you touched my penis when I was a fifth. He did grade. a lot of strange things. <laughs> yeah. <He> did, yeah. <laughs> more, I was more concerned with him beating me with my own toys than him touching my dick. I was once. afraid you were gonna <laughs> say this. When I stepped on a bee once, my mom, she's like, "Oh, I got this," and she took cigarette, her took her tobacco out of her cigarette and put it on my bee sting. And then taped it up. Mm -hmm. Did it work? Good to go. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Wow. Her mom also did a lot of crack. But I just could see him take a cigarette out of his mouth, sure. crush up the tobacco, and put it on your penis. Oh yeah, he did. There's a lot of like immigrant solutions. I'd be like, I'd be like, Dad, I want to get this. I, we bought bubbles one time. He's like, bubbles? Why you need bubbles? Palm olive. Like, right, <laughs> like yeah. everything. <laughs> I was the only kid with not wrong. He's, he's not, not wrong. wrong. Yeah, he's but not wrong. I was the only kid with an etch a sketch where I, or like li light bright. Remember that thing? Uh -huh. And he oh, made me I use regular light. lined paper, like to draw. And I'm like, this is stupid. I could see through the paper. Oh, that's funny. He's like, I'm not paying three dollars <laughs> for you to light up your bright. <laughs> With a cigarette hanging off his lip. Wow. <laughs> Two good stories right out of the gate. That's good. Wow. They're very plausible. Very plausible. Huh. Huh. All right. Any do you want to ask questions now or afterwards, Jessica? Um, I'm good for now, I think. <laughs> We've heard some stories. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh let's go on to your next story. Okay. So this was maybe let me think let me think let me think maybe four or five years ago i had so a so you were what like 22 sure uh <laughs> why <laughs> <laughs> uh, i had a, a gig in savannah georgia which is like if you've never been to savannah georgia it's like the coolest creepiest weirdest town ever it's where the uh force gump uh, yeah, that was there. The they, bench they scene. That film, there? The, the bench oh. scene the bench was filmed. Scene was filmed in there. Uh, Midnight in the Good, Midnight Garden. In the Garden of Good and Evil. I've was actually there. eaten at one of the restaurants from that movie. Good. And saw the guy with the flies. I Ew. saw him in person oh, wow. once back in the day. It's oh, a whole wow. thing, like yeah. Spanish moss. Like you go to the cemeteries. Like the cemeteries are so beautifully creepy. Like everyone. It's a beautiful you, city. Yeah. You just see like families that have died from like yellow yeah. fever, like wow. just like days apart. It's crazy. There's there was. The oldest apparently it's the oldest city in America because really? it was used as like a pirate port, oh, and wow. like wow. and like you know like the slaves built the streets of like cobblestone, so it's very dark and creepy and haunted. Wow. So they have all these like ghost tours and stuff, and so I remember I went with my friend Diana, and we went on this haunted tour, and this girl was um, like the host of the tour but she looks like just like the sad like hot topic employee <laughs> and she's like you guys ready for <laughs> the paranormal to speak to you and like you can drink in savannah like walk down the streets with booze so it's all like you know rye liquor and daiquiris and we're just like shit faced on this trolley so we end up going to this house and this house is the most haunted house in um savannah and apparently there was a woman and her children who were during the day and they got like an ax to the head. You know, just something brutal. My stories are so dark. <laughs> um, and so they never found out who killed this woman. And so apparently the, the, the police showed up and she, her dead head is like not dead yet. And so she whispers her husband's name. So the husband gets convicted. So they didn't know if she was calling out for her husband or if she was like saying uh -huh. that he did it so they hanged him in the square you know just guilty just to be safe just to be safe <laughs> and then apparently <laughs> apparently after that 
the, it turned into like another building and then it was haunted then like one time it burned down and so it's always been like something so now it's just like this like weird like storage warehouse and so we go in there and they're like okay here uh everyone uh they pass out these evp like things and they say if the spirits try to get in touch with you the light will turn green or it's going to stay red so if, if temperature changes or whatever it'll light up green what so, did that actually look like what they it did it look like pretty kind of, it basic was or kind of like a phone but it was like a remote almost yeah like it had like two little knobs on it it was like green and red and then <laughs> it would just like light up green uh -huh. and red and um so for i want to look that up yeah look, <laughs> look it up. <laughs> uh, so for some weird reason like we're just walking through and i'm like this is stupid like everything was red and uh, the girl's like, last week I saw the ghost of a dead girl in this window. And I'm like, shut up, <laughs> Beth. Um, so then uh, this guy's like, you guys are pretty fun. I want to bring you all into this room. And we were like, okay. So we got like pulled away from the group. And we're in this like tiny, tiny room where there's like all these candles lit. And there's like all these people. And they've got like headphones on and all this equipment. And we're just like, what is this? And they're like, oh, well, we come in here every night. And we research this uh, room every night because we always get different. Uh, like data comes up every night, something different. And this different is a chair. Data. Data, different data. Whatever. Data. <laughs> and so this guy's like, he goes, uh, would you, would one of you like to sit in this chair? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, sure. And so my friend Diana sits in the chair. He's like, oh, by the way, I'd left this out. They, it's the slave quarters of the house. Perfect. And um, so we start questioning the ghost. It's like, this is Steve. We've labeled the ghost name Steve. <laughs> And uh, so, like, Steve, <laughs> Steve. Yeah, I don't know why. He's and a really casual just ghost. A casual yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure it was like, Steven, or something else. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, boo, <laughs> bro. Yeah. And so they're like, Steve, are you no, there? I was like, Steve. Yeah, Steve. Yeah. You know, just a ghost named Steve. <laughs> boo, what's up? Yeah. Boo. <laughs> what up, dude? And, and so we're in the. We're in the room, and so we're like, Steve, are you there? And the light turns green. And we're like, well, okay, cool. And so. Um, I say, like, Steve, do you like my friend Diana? And the light turns green. And I go, is she your type? And it turns red. And then my friend Diana goes, Steve, are you gay? And the light turns green. Ah! And everyone in there was like, what? And they're like, the whole time. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's a dude named Steve hanging out in the slave quarters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he likes that BBC. And... Uh, <laughs> So we get back on the trolley. I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry to be this person. BBC? Big, Big Black Cock. Oh, okay, cool. I'm yeah. sorry. British I didn't Broadcasting know. I didn't Channel. Know. What are you thinking? <laughs> Jessica knows. All right. Big yeah. Black Cock. Big Black Cock. Uh, so we get back on the trolley. We're leaving. And the hot topic is like, did anybody experience anything? <laughs> Diane and I are just shit-faced, drunk in the bag. We're like, Steve's gay. She's like, well, I heard there was an experience. So, <laughs> so we left. Savannah, like knowing that we outed a ghost, and maybe, maybe like solved a great mystery wow. at the same time. Wow. <laughs> this sounds yeah. oddly like an episode of Bob's Burgers. <laughs> Does it? To me. Oh. It's what I picture in my Ooh, head. Diana's car. wearing bunny ears. They <laughs> talk about big black cock on Bob's Burgers. <laughs> <laughs> it's the number five combo. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be a burger at some point. Quick, Jessica, how old is someone in fifth grade? I don't uh, know. <laughs> What's BBC? Five. Big Black Cock. <laughs> Mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> like, so quick. Every time you guys say Mediocre, I keep hearing Oprah. And I'm like, stop <laughs> calling her Medi. <laughs> She's a good woman with a proper message. <laughs> wow, that's a strong story. Do you have any questions, Jessica, that you would like to ask? Well, okay, Savannah, we would always go through there on when we, as a family, we would drive from North Carolina to Florida because I have um, family in both, so we'd go visit them, and we would always stop in Savannah only because it had the cheapest gas. Mm -hmm. Really? So I, yeah, and I, I never thought of Savannah being anything else but a gas a stop. gas town. <laughs> <laughs> there must be nothing here. Jesus, if you knew the amount of big black cock yeah. in Savannah. So <laughs> I would have made us stay longer, yeah. Um, so, I, and I can't think of a, a town in the South being so, other than New Orleans, uh, okay with you having an open container mm -hmm. out on the street. 
That doesn't. Well, that's a very. It's good Las Vegas, Savannah, point. and there's one more. Nobody says it's Las Vegas, New Orleans, and Savannah. It's Las Vegas, New Orleans, Savannah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, li- I, I like it if he's lying. I don't care. I like it that he's like holding that. the line on that. Yeah, like a bar that. trivia savant. <laughs> you know, that's amazing. But Savannah, you know what? That's because I've been to Savannah. I used to play Savannah all the time. And I think you're making a good point, Jessica. But on the other hand, a lot of people do roam around Savannah a lot from restaurant to restaurant to bar to bar. So I might almost but I'm always bad at this game. I might almost believe Justin on Do they let you have open drinks in Myrtle Beach? (laughs) What the? (laughs) What's Myrtle Beach? (laughs) Fucking. Only if you're eating mediocre out of a jar. (laughs) Beach, I guess. Why do you bring a Myrtle Beach? Because it's a very, like, party, beachy town. I can see if they do it there, maybe, okay, Savannah. Because I can see definitely it would be more like, it's Las Vegas, New Orleans, Myrtle Beach. Hmm. Mm. Not Savannah. Savannah. All right, well, when we come back around to them, we'll <laughs> to him, we'll uh, think about what we're saying. And would you like to start your? You don't have any. You don't have any holes well, in your story at all. I do feel like. Uh, I do feel like the Steve thing was very funny. So I don't think he could. I don't think he would make that up, Steve. I think you know that is just so silly that it's. I think it could be true. Right. So. And uh, there is really nothing else to do in Savannah. I played Savannah once, and the middle guy and I went and pretended to shop for a car together as a married couple. That's how <laughs> sometimes you can get in Savannah, you can get, especially if you're there, like, because back in the day, you'd be there from, like, Wednesday through Sunday, so you had to kill some time. So I'm going to say, I, I'm not going to say if it's true or not, but I'm going to say it seems plausible. I thought he jumped around on his story a little bit too much. Right. With uh, trying to remember Think things. about a ghost, Steve. Oh. <laughs> I've seen a ghost before. I told you that. I've seen a ghost before, so that's why I believe it. I have, uh, have you seen a ghost I've before? I've definitely seen, You've seen, a I've ghost? seen a ghost. Before. Really? Well, I've seen a ghost before. Well, I've felt a ghost before. That was your dad touching your dick. <laughs> <laughs> ghost dad. <laughs> Starring Bill Cosby. Oh my God! It did. That's right. Yes. One time when I I have uh, I have two boys and one time my ex husband was holding the my little baby when he at the time was a baby was like I don't know three months old or six months old and they and they he was had on underwear and you know the fly was kind of open or whatever but you you didn't really see anything but he was just holding the baby and then the baby wiggled. And it and it fell a little bit onto his lap, and his mouth went right oh on my his God. dick. Oh no! And, and there was this moment where we're all like, "What? <laughs> Don't tell anyone!" And that's why I'm telling it. <laughs> it was like one of those moments that's where, great. like, if he was ever like, you know, hooked up to a lie detector machine, and nothing <laughs> happens. Like, it's no, it's nothing a dick, happened. not a magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, I know, it's still. so oh, no. Culturally, it's so funny how we're like that. Like everybody's yeah. like. I've, well, I've touched a dick by accident before. I was fine. Oh, you, you did? Yeah. You were by fine accident? or fine? It was fine. It was by fine. Accident. I backhanded it like, <laughs> a, like an angry Hello. Frenchman. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so go along with your story, please. Um, I love this this premise, by the way, this Thank like you. telling people stories and then trying to decide if I'm telling the truth or not reminds me yeah. of the, my entire bar bar experience. Oh, yeah. That's how, that's, that's how I survived at bars. Okay, so uh, I moved from Egypt to America when I was five or mm-hmm. s- five or six. And um, there's a lot of things in America that we take for granted. Like j- jumping jacks are not an internationally known thing. Really? Yeah. It's not, are you serious? People don't just do jumping jacks all over the They're world. jumping Jeffs. I don't know what they could maybe <laughs> jumping, my, <laughs> jumping Saeed. I don't know what they call. Him. <laughs> I don't know what they call me. We didn't have them in Egypt. We didn't have jumping right. jacks. So I got to America. I'm in school, and they're like, "Hey, do jumping jacks." And I'm like, well, "I don't know what you're doing." And they're like, "Oh, this kid's he's he's special needs." <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm not special needs. I'm just from Egypt. Like, what are you?" And then they separated from me the regular kids, and then they put me in this like special needs <laughs> physical education class. And it was just me <laughs> and 11 special needs kids. And it was like one immigrant, 11 special needs and kids. And could they all do jumping jacks? <laughs> well, I was pretty, as good as me. I, okay. I learned faster. My learning curve was faster. Okay. But in the beginning, we were at about the same level. Okay. To be, to, you know, to be fair to the school. 
But I met a kid there whose name was Sharif, and his mom set up a play date. And um, she, after she got to know me, Sharif was a gentle kid who, and his mom dressed him up really fancy. And I was, and I kind of looked like a feral kid. And in my neighborhood, we lived in a poor neighborhood. And um, when the mom brought this kid over, it was a school that had a poor side and a wealthy side. Mm -hmm. Sharif was from the wealthy side, and we lived in the poor side. So we'd make our own toys. Like if somebody bought a washer, dryer, and then we had this huge box to play with, there's this hill that was all long grass, and we'd sit in these boxes and slide down the hill. And um, when this kid came over with his mom and we had the play date, she looked at me and she goes, oh, wow, now she's seeing me on a weekend. And she goes, this kid looks rough. So she looks at me and she goes, Tamar, please play gentle with Sharif. You know, you guys can go play, but please, you know, be gentle. And I'm like, okay. And I'm, and I'm like, it's, I was almost like, I'm buzzing. Uh -huh. And he was like standing very still in this perfect white suit. So then I go, come on, Sharif, we're going to slide down the hill. That's what we used to call it, sliding down the hill. And he goes, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. that was what we called it. As yeah, opposed to. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> Jumping <fast? laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> but we called it. I mean, we had a name. We had a name Did they have sliding down the hill where you were originally from? Well, no, no. It was, yeah, it was a pyramid, all right? <laughs> it was a pyramid. Exactly. So I, here's this kid, this gentle boy in this white suit, and it is matching one suit from top to finish, top to bottom. And uh, he sees these other wild kids sliding down the hill in these washer and dryer boxes. And then he goes, I would like to try. And I'm like, oh. and I put him in the box. And the kids got so excited that Sharif was going to try that we all shoved the box. Oh, yeah. And it went down the hill faster and hit a bump and then landed. And then it just stopped in the middle of the hill. And we're like, well, how'd that happen? And then we hear this, and this huge scream. And it turned out that the uh, box had hit air. Uh -huh. And landed uh, in a sprinkler. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the sprinkler had gone. I swear to God, if this ends up with your dad touching Sharif's <laughs> dick, yeah. I'm going to lose my shit. He's like, I've got this. I've done this before. <laughs> Listen, they call me Tamar the butt rammer. The next day, a kid shows up to school with a bloody asshole. I'm like, <laughs> it went up his butt? It went oh. up, up his ass, yeah. And then we were kids. We weren't strong enough to carry him. So he's got a white suit. When she gave him to me, he was in a perfectly white suit. What is it what, with you in white suit? I don't know what it is. So we're dragging him back because we couldn't lift him. We weren't strong enough and we dragged him all the way back to my mom's house. We knock on the garage door because that was the door to the kitchen. And then Did they come you? in and I go, Shreve got hurt. And his mom comes out <laughs> oh, no. and he's covered in like grass and mud and then this huge red oh, Rorschach no. test on his asshole. <laughs> Did it really go up his ass? I think it went in his asshole, oh, uh, no. but not all the way up his asshole. And then but it, it turned on. It definitely <laughs> went. <laughs> was it like what did the sprinkler look like? I'm sorry. You mean after? No, yeah. no. Was it one of those like big ones where it's like? It was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was one of those. So oh. I don't think the whole thing went up his asshole, Jesus but I think Christ. enough of it went. Oh. Yeah. Wow. He landed on his bum. He landed. Yeah. It was like the perfect. That's what we called it, landing on your bum. Landing on your bum? Are you, are you British? Were you born yeah. in Yeah, what is that? <laughs> what? what bum? You're just a melting pot of sorts, aren't you? <laughs> the cloth of America over here. <laughs> Every time Big Ben stuck 12, I knew it was time to smoke crack. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> wow. Oh. That, now wow. that sounded like uh, Lady in the Tramp. <laughs> <laughs> Did it? A little bit. Two boys, one with a sprinkler up his ass. Where's the parallel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's kind of like that spaghetti scene. Yeah, yeah. In the tramp. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Jessica's <laughs> like, if the other dog's yeah. nose was an asshole mm -hmm. and the meatball was a sprinkler. Exactly. <laughs> this is the night. It's a beautiful night. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they call it butthole no change. <laughs> So did he have to go to the hospital? Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. And did he show up at school again or? Uh, he did. <laughs> he did again. eventually. Yeah. He did eventually show was up at school. Was he out of school for a long time after this? Um, I don't think he was out of school for a long time. I, I think um, he healed pretty quickly, but I, I do <laughs> think he got stitches. <laughs> yeah. Both your stories have stitches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was an aggressive kid. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
I, it was, I was like a car with two gas pedals and no brakes. And were you guys allowed to play together again after that? <laughs> it took a while. His, I think his mom <laughs> uh, blamed it all on me. What the fuck? And then, uh, <laughs> well, it was all my fault. Uh, so she, it took, her, it took her time. But because my mom was such a sweet person and such a nice woman, like I think most of my friends that I got through other people's moms were because my mom was super cool. And I, I was misunderstood, but my mom was like, uh, uh, like a mom of the block type Ooh. of a person. So I know that your mother is Jewish and your father is Arab. Muslim, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Muslim, no, see, they're, they're, yeah, they're both Arab. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're both Arab. Yeah. They're both from Egypt, but okay. on her side, there's roots from Spain and Morocco, okay. and they're Sephardic Jews. Uh -huh. On his side, they're Greek and Egyptian, like from Alexandria, and they have like Coptic Orthodox Christianity, Greek Orthodoxy, and Islam. Oh, wow. So like we literally had every religion under one roof in our house. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. I've been to Alexandria. <laughs> Have you? That's so cool. Wow. It's a port city. Yeah, it is a port city. That's, why are you saying it like it's a normal <laughs> thing? Like, like I've been to Alexandria. Like they have a happy cities. hour. Savannah, <laughs> Alexandria. You, you're gonna, Egypt's crazy, you're gonna, though. It is insane. I have some crazy Egypt stories. But you want to hear my favorite Egypt that. story? Huh. The cab drivers in Egypt are really amazing. Oh, and no, they're not. They're, they're, cra oh they're nuts. So my favorite story is this guy, a uh, uh, comic, who uh, took a taxi in Egypt and he got in the taxi and the guy like ran through a red light and he goes, what are you doing? And he's like, sir, please relax. I'm professional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he gets to another right. It's red again. He drives through it again. And he's like, dude, what are you doing? And he's like, sir, please. I told you I'm professional. Relax, please. And then he gets to a green light and he stops. And he goes, I don't understand this. You go through red lights. You stop at green lights. What's your problem? He goes, sir, I'm stopping in case another professional comes across. <laughs> <laughs> if that ever, shit happens uh, in the Egypt. The traffic in Egypt is li it's, there's, it's Everyone's just driving for themselves. Yeah. There's, there's no, no lanes. Right. It's just yeah. like. <sighs> they even do Morse code with their horn. There's like you could call people different bad words with the type of honking. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I like that. It's cool. Wow. That is cool. I do. Yeah. Because there's you know, yeah. we have like a fuck you honk. Yeah. yeah. And we but it's all not we as have clear. is fuck you. We don't have anything else. Like what if I wanted to say? We have something? a there's a toot. Oh, that's true. For like a, excuse me. Like her at the toot is like bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every honk should have like a bad word associated with it. Different volume. <laughs> well, you guys came in with uh, two very strong stories, and uh, and I want I want all of them to be true. <laughs> I, <laughs> but uh, as far as Justin's story, I uh, now I'm I'm gonna say because the first story like was about the zipper. <laughs> yeah. So. I, but then I'm going to say the zipper one happened, but you weren't there and didn't see it. Oh. I'm going to say that because, but the ghost one is so ridiculous <laughs> that I think it could happen. Yeah. yeah. I could see something like that happening. I Savannah. don't think that the ghost one's real. Wait, that's not a pick. What do you that's mean? not a pick. That was like a soccer game. That was like a time. Right. You, but we yeah, all we... get participation trophies, okay? Okay. So no, gonna, no, gonna, no, gonna, no he, so she's saying that the first oh, one is okay. a lie. Yeah, that's yeah. what oh, she thinks. Oh, you are yeah, saying. Yeah. Oh, that he okay, stole okay. the story from somebody else. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. There's that so anger right, you were talking right, about right. all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> that's not very British of you. <laughs> um, so uh, what do you Right-o. What do you say? I think I think that the the ghost thing is bullshit. It is sure as hell not New Orleans, Las Vegas, Savannah for <laughs> open containers and partying. And it, I don't, it I sounds like a Justin story with a hot topic girl, but. So the reason why. <laughs> you know me too well. <laughs> so the reason why you don't believe the ghost story is because there's no way they'd have open containers in Savannah. <laughs> <laughs> right, and it's a gas town. By the way, she's mm. almost always way more correct than I am when picking who's lying and who's not. So, so yeah. it could, it could be I the tease got her, different. but she's she's good at it. Yeah, that's a good point. So you're saying the second story is not true? True is not true. I think that the zipper is true. You think the zipper is true? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to take a guess on this, you guys, Andrew? I don't know. Um, I uh, fuck. I don't know. Honestly, um, I I think either of them could be true, or either of them could be uh, a friend told you because they both seem like 
so out there like so crazy enough to where it's like i having the thing fly off and then also like you could have had a friend come to school the next day be like dude the craziest shit happened you should have came and then on the other one i feel like a friend could have been like hey i was in this thing so i really don't know i'm i feel like both of them could be true or by someone else what does your gut tell you man uh fuck flip a coin um i i i I want i want the savannah one to be true just so that jessica would be like the fucking open container bullshit like that's the only reason Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's it's you against me, you two against me. Yeah. All right. How about you, Tamara? Do you want to throw in a guess here? Um. Yeah, it's the ghost one as well, and I think it's because of the name Steve. <laughs> you think it's? Not- I think go- there's a level of formality when you're a dead person, and I think when you're a dead person, you don't just give a first name. It takes a lot of time to get through to the other side, and I think you want people to know your first and last name because there's lots of dead Steve's. Well, but let's say, because we were just talking about how my real name is Felicitas so and not Felicia. Point. So if I, when I die and I come back and I'm a ghost, do you think I'd be telling everyone, hey, it's Felicitas? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, would, say, hey, it's Felicia. I would, yeah. yeah. Movie Coco. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd be like, remember my name. I'm not remember here anymore. Right. Well, I think there could be ghosts named Steve. I think. From what, 1818? I've never met a ghost <laughs> named Steve. I just can't even imagine a guy named Steve existing in 1818. Steve, and yes, like why, did, why does every still. ghost have to be from like the 1818 or 1800s? Why couldn't he be from the 70s? You know what I mean? It's Steve was with Steve the from the 1870s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steve wasn't from the fucking 70s. I mean, you said slave stuff. What? Yeah. So, I mean, he still could have been uh, late, you know, when did slavery go away? <laughs> Jesus, no one knows the answer. Anyway. <laughs> the Emancipation Proclamation. 1865? Uh, sure. <laughs> Wait, that's I, sad that we don't know that, I and I'm going to look I'm, that up I'm afterwards. Nice. <laughs> um, so what what is the real truth, Justin? The real truth is... Um, sorry, Jessica. <gasps> Savannah, Georgia. Savannah's true? Yep. You're a little plot. I can't <laughs> believe it. Wow. I'm never right. Felicity Dade has got it correctly. That's right. I'm never right. Oh, wow. Damn yep. it. Wow. Damn it. Exciting. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. I should have known. I twisted, the, I twisted the, the carnival story. The carnival story did happen, but without like a horrible so crash. So you got it right. Oh. It was, uh, I went with a friend of mine and we got on the turn. You know, uh-huh. the, like, yeah. what's it called? The, yeah. Spin, what is that? The, uh, la, 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 is that the one where it sucks you to the side? Gravity. Swirly yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. Swirly yeah. 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 Gravitron. Yeah. Gra- yeah. Oh, that thing. And I had, we were like going up and I was like, oh shit. And I stuck my hands out and I slapped my <gasps> nose. <gasps> and my nose just like bust all oh, over. Oh my so God. Just, like, blood going everywhere. And, and then, all over everybody else's face. Yeah. And nobody, and nobody, at carnivals, you'd be surprised. They don't have fucking napkins. Oh, so my God. Couldn't find a napkin, so I just walk around with, like, crusty blood <laughs> all over my face. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn like, it. Like a party yeah. animal yeah. from the yeah. 90s. And then his dad came over and touched my dick. Yeah, it was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So now we go over to Tamar. Yeah. And uh, Tamar's stories were about his uh, popping a wheeling and crushing his penis on the curb or some on, on the it's bike. It's both about stitches. It's one yes. butt Violet. stitches, yes. one penis stitches. Every story yeah. I've ever told involves stitches. Yeah. <laughs> and that your father touched your penis. God, that. And then the other one is the sliding down the hill with mm-hmm. someone. That's uh, what we called it. With Sharif yeah. getting. Uh, <laughs> Want to go slide down the hill? That's what, we, that's what we'd say. Well, sliding down the hill, actually. <laughs> Can it, I would literally <laughs> knock on the neighbor's door and go, can Adrian and Nathan come sliding down the hill? Oh. Like that. <laughs> uh, that's a toughie, though, because I can't imagine that the whole thing went up his butt. The whole sprinkler I went up his butt. I could see, because I'm picturing like one of those old metal ones, like yeah. on the fields. Right. Not that, but yeah. just the like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, they okay. just pop up. And they had yeah. like the, like, like prongs on the end of it. Yeah. And I think he like <laughs> landed on it. Maybe it didn't go in his butt, but right. like it hurt his butt. Yeah. He hurt his boom boom. But you said when it landed, it didn't move. The it box didn't. stopped moving. <laughs> <laughs> so he slid into it? Uh, no, he, it there's a air. mound, he got air, and then landed, and then it, it mysteriously stopped in the middle of the hill, and then two seconds of silence, and then like a goat like shriek. 
Right, and this 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 <laughs> hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the air quotes. College. Podcast quotes. This <laughs> hill yeah. podcast quotes. Yeah. <laughs> is, it was a grass hill. Long grass, yeah. Hence the sprinkler, I suppose. And long grass is yeah. slippery. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say that... Uh, I'm going to say the first story is true... Because I want your dad to have touched your penis. <laughs> oh, is that wrong? Right? No, yeah, that's it wrong. It wasn't in no. a we. It wasn't in that's a sexual way. So I feel comfortable in saying that it was just in a like because because my mother was an immigrant too, and they and like I remember one time my parents got divorced, yeah. and uh and my dad had custody of my brother and my mom had me, and then my dad brought my brother over for my mother's birthday, and then my mother got really mad at my dad for some fucking reason. This is in Berlin, Germany, and my dad took my brother, and as he was walking down the hallway, my mother shouted out, "You!" Fucker mother, <laughs> and I was mortified that she didn't know how to say motherfucker correctly. Yeah. So I could see where a where Fucker mother. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah. So I'm gonna say the first story is true, and the second story is not true. Well, oh. I do think that um, your your thinking is very correct. Like the first one sounds so like it could be real, because you could just picture an immigrant family member doing that, <laughs> or a crackhead mom. <laughs> Either way, yeah. But the thing that I feel like you pushed the fancy boy friend a little bit more, m- make it to s- make it seem more outlandish. Yeah, because so no we, mother would bring a kid with a suit, a white suit, right, to go playing on yeah. the weekend to go slide down the hill, as they called it. They Unless it was after church, was it after church? Uh, it was not after church, but she didn't know we were going to go slide down the hill. And what was she didn't know it was an option. What was their last <laughs> name? What was his last name? Uh, Matar. So she was Mrs. Matar. Yeah. No, I don't think that's. Real. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything, <laughs> Jessica? <laughs> weirdest thing ever. No. No, I don't <laughs> believe the Mrs. Matar. <laughs> no, because that sounds like when they're half a horse half. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's <laughs> a centaur. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Centara. A Minotaur, a <laughs> oh, her last, oh, her last name is Matar. Yeah, okay, oh, she's, she's a, a unicorn. Yeah, <laughs> she is a centaur. Full on half horse woman. That's not a human name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now everyone knows that Sharif Matar out there somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Hey. As a unfortunate scar. Hi, Miss Matara. (laughs) 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 You want to go slide down the hill? (laughs) (laughs) How many kids do you have? Yeah, exactly. I'm going to say that that one is uh, real just because I think you tried to, to make it seem more outlandish. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. What about you, Justin? What are your thoughts on his stories? Well, I think kids are terrible. And <laughs> yes, they are. I mean, <laughs> I sure. I honestly can say that the first story seems like it could be true because right. I feel like that dad, the like, eh, blah, 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 blah. and it's so like gruesome. And I think that's something that like a, like sticks with you for a kid. Well, both stories are both like traumatizing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> However, but like with the box story, I can see that because I was like, I when I was a kid, I played outside all the time too. And I remember like, I remember hurting a, a friend of mine accidentally. And then um, I just have the image of like, I see the grass and it's slick and I see the box, but then I see the, I see the bounce and then I just, I like, I think the detail of the box <laughs> stopping. <laughs> Like, cause that's such an image that I will never get out of my head now. I know, it's Just not. Hit, hit. I know. So I think I think the box one is true. And you say long grass. Now you said this was not East LA, but it was this was in La Puente. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't rain very often. So how slick was that grass? It could have been springtime. I mean, it rains in the that. spring. <laughs> but it, I say that yeah. that one's true. I say that one's true. So the box Against one, you guys say. How about you, Andrew? Uh, my, uh, my assumption is that the first one happened, but it happened to, you have a brother, right? No, no? only child. Only child, okay. Uh, oh, Jesus, even worse. I, 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 I haven't talked to Tamara in fucking about a year. Um, but, uh, I want to say it happened to a friend in the neighborhood, because you couldn't have been the only person that thought that chick was hot. Like, it's just impossible. Um, so it could have been a buddy in the neighborhood, and then the other one, I think it did happen. Uh, I will say the second one's true. The okay. box. Okay. The first one he got from like Wonder Years. Just because yeah. then, like, I, I did the same thing. I, me, and my, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. me and my brothers uh, had a four wheeler and we just like 
rope up like a piece of like wood and drag each other around and like slide right, around grass right. all the time. It's so either bloody dick typical. or bloody ass. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true, Tamara. What's true? Uh, the true story is actually the first. What? Yes! Yeah, my There's dad. No way my I got dad. two of them running the podcast. Yeah. I, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. I do my clean wave. I do my clean wave. Oh, <laughs> wow. that's bad. Yay. Yes, you guys yes. caused this. But there was a kid. <laughs> there was a kid in a white suit whose suit I ruined. But it was uh, I, we were playing golf in a park, and I'm like, stand and that's back. What you called it golf in the park. Go- we call that's what we call it golf in the park. <laughs> And then he, he was standing beside me, and I'm like, back up, back up. And he's like, I'm back. And then I swung the club and hit him in the jaw. Oh. <laughs> and then he went home with blood all over his, so that I just come. And but the long grass you, was a real thing. We really was, did slide well, down did the hill. How did you come up with the box took air, and then it just yeah, stopped? Well, <laughs> <laughs> because we did do that before, and it did land in the sprinkler went through the box, but it missed an oh. asshole. Oh. And everybody was like, oh, my God. Like, it, it, went between the legs. It, it went like it was lower back. Oh. Like, oh just God. missed their, their asshole. Did you guys still keep doing it though afterwards? No, we slowed down. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we slowed down. <laughs> wow. But it was like this thing whenever somebody got a new dryer, a new washer, we all lived in this block. So we'd be like, a big box. Ah. And then we forgot. Right. And we'd start over. We did that too because my dad was in the army and he was stationed in Fort Ord and they have ice plants, which are amazing to slide down in. Ice anyway. plants, yeah. like ice where plants. they make ice? No, they're like these. Uh, <laughs> That's what I, I don't know. I don't know what they're called. We call them ice plants, but they're just like some kind of succulent that grows on a hillside. But when you break it, like they're like a uh, aloe. Like aloe, when you break them oh, up, they succulents. ooze a lot. So yeah. when they go down, when you went down the hill, it was like it was like sliding on Fast. ice. Ice plants. That's what we call them. <laughs> Anyway, this has been a... I was like, when were you born? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? How they still have you? ice plants. How dare you? She didn't say she was playing in the tar pits. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, ice plants. When the you? ice plants bloomed, <laughs> the children could play. That's what's in the year of our Lord, ice plant. How dare you ask what me openly about that. What ice plant harvest we have this year? <laughs> We must thank the gods. <laughs> well, you guys have been so so great uh, with your stories. Is there how uh, can thanks. people follow you, and uh, what what do you want to shout out, and and how can people follow? You? Uh, Tamara Katan on all social media and t- Twitter, uh, Instagram. I'm Tamara Cat, and then um, TamaraKatan.com is my website. That's the best place to go for shows. Please come out. I just moved back to LA and and love being home. Great. And how about you, Justin? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Just Martindale, Instagram Just Martindale, and you can catch me every Thursday on these What the Fashion. So Snapchat funny. Discovery. Wonderful, great. wonderful, wonderful. And, uh, and I would like to throw a special thank you to Andrew, who's always uh, such a great producer, and he keeps us honest on everything that we're supposed to do, and I would like to thank you for that, Andrew. Andrew Rose. And uh, Andrew, would you like to uh, say something about... Uh, yeah, um, uh, you can find me everywhere. Uh, one Andrew Rose uh, across all social media. Also, if you uh, like the show, please give us a review, a rate, all that fun stuff. Any questions, comments, concerns? Also, go to e- you can email us at uh, the Liars Club One at gmail.com. And then also, real quick, uh, I just wanted to do this. Uh, Mr. Earl Scathel was on our podcast not too long ago, and uh, Miss Wellington, uh, Miss Jessica, was on uh, his uh, what is it, inappropriate Earl? It's a fantastic episode. I'm listening to it as we speak. So go and uh, listen to it. Hashtag mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I have been Felicia Michaels. And I'm Jessica Wellington. You've been lied to. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentle sirs. This is Andrew Rose, the producer of The Liars Club. I just wanted you lovely folks to follow our awesome hosts. And that would be Jessica Wellington and Felicia Michaels. And you can follow them on Twitter at Felicia Michaels, F-E-L-I-C-I-A, and Jess Wellington, two. That is the number two. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for coming by and uh, sharing your stories with us here at the Liars Club. And you've been lied to.